It's a busy night, and it'll be a busy next couple of days as far as severe weather is concerned. We've got two areas that we're watching, one in the mid-Atlantic states, another one in the plains, and tomorrow it'll be up and down the Mississippi and Missouri River Valleys. So we'll be discussing all of that and what, if any, ramifications these weather systems are going to have to the weather in the Northeast and the Northern Mid-Atlantic states. That's all coming up next on tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show, which is brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system and join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is on the descriptor to this podcast. If you make a purchase of this or anything else from the Tempest website, because they have lovely gadgets and gizmos in smart weather fashion, <coughs> use the coupon code WINTER2324 and Joe Rayo will personally hand you... 10 per, I I personally am going to hand them. I was wondering 10%. whether you'd catch that or not. Well, if I had it in my power, I would gladly hand 10%, but I'm not the one who's doing it. It's Tempest that's doing it. So if you get anything from Tempest, they will be happy with the coupon code to give you 10 big percent off. da da Yes. So here we are. I must say a beautiful day here in Georgia North. Got to uh, 82 at my house. I did some yard work this morning. I walked my miles. I uh, spent the uh, afternoon recovering from working in my garden and walking my miles. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow, which will probably be a repeat performance of today. Well, I uh, spent uh, a couple of hours in the on the front lawn picking up all the sticks that had accumulated from recent wind storms here. And so did uh, my lovely wife. And after two hours, we called it quits because we were getting eaten up by, and it depends on, you know, what you call them, it black lasts. flies, midges. Um, uh, it's it, 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 horrible, whatever. You know, I finally, after two hours, I just said, I got to go inside, take a shower and put the, uh, and, and put, you know, the bug stuff on my, my both of my arms because it was horrible. Yeah, uh, well, I I have here, I have bees that are the size of small birds, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. They, they hover. They like to hover near doorways, which is, you know, you always have to be careful going in and out of the house because you don't want to let the bugs in. But uh, moving, uh, moving along closer every day to the summer season, so, we, of course, uh, that brings, probably will bring the humidity up, and but it's it's... Summers here have been pretty reasonable, so I really can't complain to about too much. We also uh, call those we also call those little buggers shad flies. They come around every year in in April, and they spend a few weeks, you know, making your life miserable by buzzing around and biting or whatever. They finally gone by May, but uh, this is shad fly season. And yes, David Schwartz, we are well aware. Joe and I were talking about it before we came on the air about CBS News, and this is for all of you out there who you know. Uh, thinking about you know getting into the TV weather industry or whatever, CBS News is looking for a new chief meteorologist. Starting salary six hundred k a year. So there you go. Well, yeah, and that's he, a, and that's got that's on the network side. It must be on the network side. Oh, I don't know. I mean, they're you know local local weather casters make a ton of money. Uh, so they you know I I don't know what division this is if it is indeed local here in new york or whether or not it's national but if you've always had this inclination to uh try out and become a tv weather personality there you go right there six hundred thousand right. dollars per year yeah, I, it did say cbs news i think it would have said wcbs if it was local but i guess it's probably their their network division so to go along with what you said with they hired a head of the you know, a new CBS weather creation department or something. They're closing. They're close. This is interesting. They're closing their bureau in Japan, I believe. Right. And now they're going to start a uh, a new weather central in the in the network. And uh, this this came out. It was passed along by a friend of mine, formerly at CBS News. He's retired now. Charlie K. It's he reportedly they're closing their Tokyo bureau and reassigning a highly regarded senior for a foreign correspondent, Liz Palmer. Uh, and then they announced that they hired 
from ABC News, a veteran, Wendy Fisher, who is joining the organization as vice president of Weather Strategy. And according to the website TV Newser, Fisher is going to lead a new dedicated national weather unit that will ultimately be known as the CBS Weather Network. And this unit will work closely with national and station reporting teams, including more than 60 meteorologists, weather teams, and storytellers across CBS News and stations and CBS Media Ventures. Uh, Fisher was quoted as saying, quote, in an era when weather is one of the top stories audiences look for on a daily basis, I am excited to join an organization investing in bringing together the strongest reporting teams, storytellers, and technology to bring depth and innovation to weather coverage. Uh, legacy networks such as CBS That's have sure. also been struggling of late. CBS's parent company, Paramount, reportedly has had merger talks with suitors. In other words, Paramount and CBS ain't doing too good. What was the phrase that they used depth to provide depth and what? Um, what was the what was the phrase that you were asking about? In, in uh, something in about the coverage, weather, something a description about the got coverage. In era when when weather is one of the top stories audiences look for on a daily basis, I'm excited on joining an organization investing in bringing together the strongest reporting teams, storytellers and technology to bring depth and innovation okay stop right there now you know joe really seriously when it comes to depth and innovation i mean that's that's exactly what the joe and joe weather show podcast has been all about uh and still is uh sunday through thursdays at 7 35 p.m uh so i uh you know i i i think they're looking you know you know i wouldn't be shocked if the High, you know, those high executives in the CBS brass are watching the Joe and Joe Weather Show, trying to come up with innovative ideas to include uh, in their um, in their little programming thing that they're doing. Well, it could be, you know, they, they. How about Weather Point Counterpoint? Remember on sixty Minutes, they had two people who would disagree with each other, but they brought up each brought up some interesting points or whatever. I mean, why can't they bring up something like that with us? Well, you know, you know we, and believe well, it or not, we, you and I hardly ever argue for one thing. Well, we so so you know, that there's so there's no, that no, for six hundred thousand for six hundred thousand dollars, I'll be argue, willing to argue I'm with right, anybody. I'll, 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 I'll gladly rip your heart out for for six for six hundred grand. Welcome uh, to everybody on the chat board tonight, and those of you who are lurking in the background because we know you're there. Uh, to tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. As we said, we're on Sunday through Thursday at 7.35 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays are off days for us, unless there's a big storm, in which case we will uh, add a show or two here and there and then subtract a show or two from another time from another time slot. Uh, so subscribe, turn your notifications on so you don't miss us. And if you like the show, please, by all means, hit the like button uh, so that Joe and I can go away feeling good about ourselves whatever <laughs> exactly all right so we have we had a beautiful day here today sans the uh the the bugs and the uh the shad flies which you know oddly, en oddly enough though oddly enough as nice as it was uh you know you, with, with this pseudo northwest flow that's over the northeast uh, there's these there's these little short waves, and I just point that out because first of all, you can sort of see on the satellite loop tonight what's going on uh, in uh, central east central uh, Virginia to the Delmarva Peninsula. Uh, right there is a you know line of thunderstorms that actually started out much further to the north, and some of them got into southeastern Pennsylvania. Then there were also a couple of breakaway showers that formed uh, over northern New Jersey, small ones, but they were there. I didn't see if any of that stuff reached the ground because they didn't look like they were they were anything substantial. But uh, just that's the kind of atmosphere we're in, we're in here with that northwest flow. There's probably these little ripples, and you could sort of see them uh, coming down out of Canada. So I guess one of them must have rolled through uh, late this afternoon in a couple of isolated spots. But again, more pronounced down in Virginia, and we're beginning to get some thunderstorm development. Uh, from a, a rather large area of severe weather risk that WPC has indicated for the entire plains from south to north. 
Now, much of the severe weather is going to, going to occur overnight uh, and into tomorrow morning. And it's starting to break out uh, not only in parts of central, te uh, central tech, west central Texas, so you can see some lightning strikes there, but also seeing some storms now in western Nebraska and in, up in western South Dakota, uh, where uh, the uh, rotation that's in the Rockies is starting to have an impact. But nice in the southeast, nice in Florida today, nice uh, for the most part in the uh, northeast, although there were some clouds up in northern New England. And now we're setting up for this storm system to the west. I still don't see anything major going on this week, other than weather fronts coming through. Yeah, I, nothing that will come down in the category. I, I agree with you. Nothing is going to come down in the category of uh, dangerous or severe. I mean, just, you know, on, on Thursday, for example, it may be one of those indifferent type of days, cloudy, dreary. I wouldn't say, would you, would you term it doom and gloom, Joan? I, I wouldn't do that. I would just. Well, you know, for me, doom and gloom for me is that it doesn't even have to rain on the doom and gloom day. It's just when it's that low overcast and it's just, uh, you know, it looks like it's going to rain, but it may not necessarily rain. It may just just be a very gloomy type of day. So I, I, I kind of lump that into a gloom and doom scenario. Right. Because that's what it feels like. You look outside, you look at these clouds, you, there's no sun at all. You think it's going to going to rain and it doesn't or if it does it's like this you know misty stuff uh i also would like to add a little bit of a northeast wind to that mix so that it's got this sort of raw damp feeling here it's uh yeah i i hope all of you enjoyed today please to your fullest extent enjoy tomorrow because um uh, and and you know actually wednesday we may get away with half the day with dry weather, but then by, you know, after after lunchtime on Wednesday, here comes the rain again. You know, it almost sounds like a, like a very popular song. Yes, it's been here done. Comes the rain. Well, anyway. Annie Lennox, uh, with Annie Lennox and the uh, Uber High School, thank you. Here we, here we go again with the same old dreck, if you will, uh, for uh, for later Wednesday, Thursday, and quite likely into Friday as well. Uh, what, what are you going to do? We yeah. get the, I've been saying since, since, since the winter, We've been getting like one or two nice days relative to five or six not so nice days. That seems to be the ratio of things. It'd be lovely if we can go through a protracted spell of dry and pleasant weather, but uh, at least for this week, that does not seem to be. Ooh, somebody's calling on the telephone. Right. If, if that's the t Chinese take, it might be the Chinese takeaway. Yes. Well, all right. Anyway, what else can, can I do? Can we listen in? No. We do not. <laughs> oh, too too bad. Well, you probably wouldn't live another day if you did, if we did. Yes. Uh, so we've got... Uh, it's, somebody, it's somebody who I've... You know, it's the great part about being able to uh, look at your screen and see who's actually calling you. This is a guy that I've been avoiding. You know, I really don't, you know, care to talk with him. And uh, neither does Renata. So... I see she's let the uh, the answering machine. And the thing about this guy is he'll never leave you a message. He'll never leave a message. And that's that's even more annoying. I mean, if, if you left a message of some substance, maybe I'd call him back. But right. if he doesn't get a real person, he just hangs up and that's it. So Is, is his telephone number Alexander 4444? No, 4444, no. The line is busy. Two yeah. severe thunderstorm watches up at the moment. Uh, one has been partially whittled away, uh, but remains up for southeastern counties of West Virginia, much of southern, all of southern Virginia, really, except the extreme west, southwestern part. And it extends, uh, it's now uh, canceled for Delaware and Maryland, but still up for the southern half of the Delmarva Peninsula. We also have a severe thunderstorm watch that's up for the western half of Nebraska into uh, much of the western and south central part of South Dakota. And the yellow in Texas that you see, uh, that's all west of Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, is uh, and runs into a couple of counties in southwest Oklahoma. That is a working tornado watch that is up and peppered in there are red flag warnings and uh, high wind watches and wind advisories. Uh, and also, you go on the uh, other side of that. Uh, in the Rockies, where we have a peppering of winter storm warnings and winter storm watches and winter weather advisories. Nothing widespread, 
uh, just a, a, some, some counties here and some counties there. And the rest of the country, including the West, is pretty uh, quiet for the most part, at least for now. And as we check out the radar, and here's that line is actually uh, at the moment. Let me re quickly refresh this because it looks like we have, uh, oh, just one. We just got, oh, they've all gone now, all the severe thunders. They went, we went from four to, this is, this is, you know, our magic here on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. We make severe thunderstorm warnings disappear. Right? Before the show started, there were six of them up, and now there are none. Uh, we have this uh, line of storms that's just uh, slowly moving, sinking southeastward and beginning to weaken. Meanwhile, where we've got low pressure developing, so there's some upper air energy to get involved here. We're starting to see some severe thunderstorm warnings up in central Texas, and those have all gotten whittled away in the last few minutes. Uh, and uh, the ones that have <laughs> been South Dakota and Nebraska, I'm laughing because in all three instances, we start out with these warnings and then the boxes just disappear. So um, I guess that's just us. And then we've got some scattered rain and snow in western Colorado and Wyoming and parts of Utah and back up into Montana. Some rain showers in eastern North Dakota going into Minnesota and nothing in the, uh, in the west. The Storm Prediction Center tonight has uh, enhanced risk from uh, central Kansas through uh, much of Nebraska into southern portions of South Dakota. And that comes with a 10% tornado risk and a hatched area of 10% tornado risk, which means that there is a 10% or greater probability of EF2 to EF5 tornadoes within, tw within 25 miles of any point. We've seen that a couple of times uh, in the last week. Big area of 5% uh, that uh, covers that entire light risk area uh, that, that goes from southernmost South Dakota down into Texas. Uh, no tour uh, the east. Uh, still has a, we have a leftover, they haven't done anything with this yet as far as getting rid of it or, or drinking it, but they've got a, a slight risk to enhance risk across uh, southern Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Virginia uh, with the enhanced risk in southeast Virginia, which is about where those thunderstorms are. And the rest of the uh, radar has, uh, you know, if we look at the rest of that area, we have a couple of scattered little blips here and there to the west, but nothing that's really bubbled up uh, at the moment. And as far as rainfall is concerned, because this is mostly rainfall over the next seven days, uh, if you look at the east, it's basically a quarter of an inch or less from Maine to Georgia. However, there are a couple of pockets of a half to three quarters across Pennsylvania to New Jersey and Long Island, and also for uh, coastal uh, North and South Carolina and Southeast Virginia. In these areas, some of that's from what's going on tonight. And uh, we're seeing uh, one and a half inches or more uh, for the next seven days uh, from uh, east, northeast Texas, northeastward into Arkansas, northwest Louisiana. And to the north, uh, we're seeing it for uh, southeast South Dakota, northeast Nebraska, much of Iowa, southern Minnesota into Wisconsin. So basically up and down the entire Mississippi River Valley, we're going to be seeing uh, at least an in most, most places, at least an inch of rain, and that extends into the Great Lakes. And much of the West uh, is, is nice and quiet. I'm going to check to see. I was trying to get the, the snow maps for some reason from WPC were not working earlier. And I'm thinking they are still not working because if you bring this up, uh, it's blank, believe it or not. Maybe, Let me see maybe they the, just don't. Is it possible they don't think that there's any any snow in the future? No, no, because if I, I switch to the GIF image, so you can see it here. Uh, so this is the probability of at least an inch. We can go a little higher. So let's go to probability for at least four. And it's confined to areas in northwest Wyoming and south central Montana. Uh, other than that, and this is uh, taking us through Thursday morning, uh, there's nothing else uh, in the west or, you know, obviously nothing. Uh, going on uh, in the eastern part of the United States. So uh, carrying us through, as we take a look at the GFS, you know, yesterday's weather front still kind of hanging around the mid-Atlantic states, and it's going to basically convert itself into a warm front with this big low that's going to be in Nebraska tomorrow afternoon. And of course, now tomorrow's severe weather uh, shifts eastward. And in fact, I'm going to take a 
I, I didn't show tomorrow's severe weather risk. Uh, tomorrow's severe weather risk is uh, in Iowa, in northwest, northeast Missouri, western Illinois. Slight risk goes down into Arkansas and easternmost Oklahoma. A little nose of marginal risk coming across southern Ohio into West Virginia and Virginia. And that also, Joe, another 10% matched area uh, in the enhanced risk. Northeast Missouri and much of Iowa in a 10% tornado risk and a 10% chance that there could be EF2 to EF5 tornadoes with this, this particular weather system. What would you do if you were confronted by a... Uh... If you were confronted by an EF five, if you saw one that was heading right, right in your direction, <laughs> I mean, well, I would run out into the, I would run out into the farm, and go to the storm cellar and bang my foot to get <laughs> to get uh, Andy M. <laughs> Andy M. to open the darn thing and let me in. <laughs> you know, I suddenly went blank. Andy M. and what was her uncle's name? What, um, uh, uh, Uncle Henry? Uncle Henry. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Uncle Henry! Yeah, yeah that would probably work. I, got, yeah. I, could, I could go into my crawl space here. Would, would that work? <laughs> uh, I would think so. I mean, this, this, how, you know, this, this cabin that I'm in, I live in, is extremely well built. It really is. That's right, Vincent Croce. It's a twister! It's a twister! Oh, God. Uh, there's a wrapped up low in the plains. And, you know, sometimes these storms in, in, the, in this time of year would have a backside snow going on or even a late, you know, a, a, a mid April blizzard. But not the case. Again, uh, an absence of cold air, of real cold air. There wasn't much for out in the wintertime. So I don't know why we would expect it to be around now. Uh, to the west, you can see up in the southwest Canada, there's some patches of snow. Meanwhile, here in the east, you know, that frontal boundary, again, it's going to become sort of a warm front with this. So um, it does, we just get a nice little high that noses down from uh, Jane, from Hudson Bay, and uh, that should make for a nice day tomorrow. You know, that's a one one thing about, now this happened today, and so this time of year, you get you get enough sunshine during the day, and if it's not truly if you're not truly in any kind of cyclonic flow of colder air aloft, uh, you can warm up uh, and warm up above nights. Like many areas today uh, hit middle to upper 70s, but most forecasters were probably at least several degrees lower than that. I think a couple of 80 degree highs were achieved here and there in eastern PA to southern New England. Lovely. Ah, yes, we, can, so we can use that kind of you know condition. Yeah, well, this is the time of year for it. Uh, the sun's out, and you got a decent amount of sun, and you're in a, you know, nothing worse than say a marginally cool air mass. The the daytime heating is just overpowering with the uh, the sun strike. This low goes northeast up into northern Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So there's a sort of leftover. The low's weakening as it moves northeastward. So there's going to be, as you said, Joe, probably. You know, the, the start of the day might not be too bad, but then as the day wears on, it'll be clouds and probably get into some showers late Wednesday, Wednesday night into at least part of Thursday. And then that goes out and Friday doesn't look all that bad, but there's another weather front coming through Friday night. But that front's weak. I mean, there's probably going to be a couple of showers. Now, here's where I love the GFS day. Oh, the timing from some of the overnight models was that the front was going to try to come through Friday night into early Saturday morning with little with it. Now it's back to no, no, it's going to come through sometime Saturday afternoon with a few showers. So either way, I think you probably have to indicate that there's some risk there. And I'm thinking that as long as the front behaves itself, there will probably be some kind of wave in the southeast. That should go out underneath everybody and not cause any serious issues for uh, for Sunday. Uh, and, and uh, maybe for the start of next week, it'll be okay. We 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 hope. You know, as I said last night, it was looking like we were on on the way toward a uh, a, a nice protracted spell of dry fine weather next week. And I cannot tell you whether or not we uh, we're still in that ballpark because I haven't been able to get to the Climate Prediction Center site that for whatever reason. 
uh, they are just simply not loading or they're simply not working uh, this afternoon and this evening. Something may be wrong. Well, Joe, it's, you know, clearly they're waiting for us to, you know, say what we're going to say. And, uh, you know, magically the site will probably reappear when we, uh, when we're done with the uh, Joe and Joe weather show podcast tonight. Yes. Well, naturally. Um, I'm not seeing, I'm just trying to look to see if the gradient is tight enough. Maybe it gets a little breezy Saturday, later Saturday into Sunday for, but it doesn't look any like anything to really uh, write home about. And then next week, uh, I mean, just, you know, weak systems. I would think it's probably going to be dry most of the time. But well, it, again, we've got a fairly large high pressure system that looks like it's going to be descending out of South Central Canada for the start of next week. And it certainly looks big enough to encompass a fair amount of next week, unless I'm looking at something different uh, than what no, you're looking No, I, I have it on the, you know, that isobar at the top of the map across Hudson Bay is at, at, at least a 1034. Let me go widen out to see. Uh, yeah, it's a, ah, it's almost a 1040 ish high over Hudson Bay. That's, uh, that's spreading out uh, across um, uh, across the eastern part of the U.S. Right, and uh, normal high here in the Hudson Valley at this time of the year should be in the low 60s, and yet uh, we're looking at temperatures which, well, Wednesday and especially Thursday. My God, Thursday! What a I don't even want to think about Thursday. Thursday, we're probably going to be a good 10 or 15 degrees below normal we may not even get out of the 40s on thursday really what an ugly looking day thursday looks like from this vantage point still only in the 50s on friday and we won't climb back to near normal. well we're not going to climb back over to or above normal probably right on through the beginning of next week so well the, the uh, thursday qualifies as a gloom and doom type of day oh um, if you want to call it that yeah you know um all right, let's do a little Briller Jeopardy, shall we? Surely. Okay, so tonight uh, Scott Briller has uh, sent away uh, the eight states that average the most tornadoes in the month of April. The, 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 I'm sorry, he said the what eight states. Oh, yeah, he did say eight. Okay, he skipped a line, so I didn't see that. The eight states that average the most tornadoes in the month of April. Okay. And well, uh, Dr. Ruben Fairchild uh, starts off with Oklahoma, and that's number two uh, on the list. However, uh, Dr. Ruben Fairchild, Tennessee is not on the list. Okay, so uh, there's that. And John Melander uh, says Kansas, and Kansas is number three. Uh, Rich Rothmansky, Johnny Quest. Uh, and William Uber all pointing out the great state of Texas, and the great state of Texas is number one. So we have the first three. Um, How about Ohio? I, uh, Ohio is not uh, in the top eight. However, Rich Rothmansky, Mississippi is, uh, and they are number eight uh, on the list. Um, the reason I said Ohio is because back in 1974, the great super outbreak of tornadoes, and one town literally got wiped off the map. Xenia, Ohio. Xenia, Ohio. Yeah, I remember that. Mm. Um, Arkansas says Joe Z and John Melander, and Arkansas is number seven. Um, Vincent Croce says Kentucky. Kentucky sadly did not make the, the uh, list of semifinalists this year, or finalists, I guess. Um, let's see. No, Patrick Darcy, Georgia is not on the list. Uh, not there. Uh, so uh, we have uh, Christina Pedia uh, said, listed a whole Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, Nebraska, and Missouri. Uh, Missouri is number six. Okay. How, uh, however, in Arkansas, we've already got Oklahoma. We've already got Kansas is number three. So that's there. And Mississippi is number eight. So we're, and we got Texas. So we're missing um, just one state that came in at number five. Oh, I just saw somebody that has it. And Northern Grace got it, Joe. Alabama. 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 Yes. Uh, where there are, uh, where there is at least, there is a Bucky's in Alabama. Just want you to know. Yes. Uh, 
I'm trying to remember. I know there's two of them. One on 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 seventy. One on I I twenty, and the other one on I eighty five. So there's two Buckies in uh, in Alabama. Uh, so um, I'm very you know it's exciting. The chat board just got them all so darn quickly. It's amazing. Yes, that we got a small audience. We do. So, do you have any gossip? No, nothing. You have no gossip. No gossip, nothing. I don't have a shred of gossip either. I'm so out of the loop. <laughs> and we don't. We, we only. We didn't even get to fifty likes tonight. No, uh, you know what, April. You know, uh, April's like the slow month. Uh, it starts picking up as we go through May. Yes. Um. Uh, Boosies. Yes, Christina Pedia. I can with what with my friend Phil. I often call it Boosies. I gotta wear get my Bucky. I gotta wear my Bucky's bathing suit soon. Did I show you? Did I show you my Bucky's bathing suit? <laughs> no. Hey, hold on. I, I think this is like too much information, Joe. <laughs> uh, I, well, I I won't model it. Oh God. And once he shows the bathing suit, ladies and gentlemen, mental images will begin to form in most of our minds here. No, it's, <laughs> not, it's not terrible. It's so here's my this is my Bucky's bathing suit that I bought because I needed a new one. I destroyed the old one. It's not terrible. And you can okay. see the Bucky's beaver there on the uh, on the bottom. Okay. You see the Bucky's beaver? Yes, I see the Bucky's beaver. I remember, so, actually, I remember actually City Service or Sitco, they used to use a beaver as well for their uh, mascot. They used to say eager beaver service. So That was a long time ago. I remember Exxon had those things that looked like lottery tickets, and you had to scratch it off, and if it spelled Tigerino. tiger. Yeah. Tigerino, yes, I remember yeah. that. Remember that? My father once won, I think he won $50. Uh, this was 1973, $50, which would probably be, be the equivalent of about $500. I had, I had now. news for you. That Tigerino, there was, there was a period in the mid and late 60s where every gasoline station had some sort of a contest going on. Sunoco, Sunny Dollars, Tigerino with Exxon or Esso. Um, and in fact, you could even watch. Uh, an episode from uh, the Andy Griffith show where Goober's gas station was offering money. Um, that was a big thing back in the mid and late 60s. Gas stations offering you money by playing various contests or whatever. So Yeah. Well, you know, gas was, what, 25 cents a gallon before 1973? Oh, why not? And Well, you only got like seven, you know, everything. But it was leaded gasoline and, and everybody got like seven miles to the gallon or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Oh well, uh, uh, Vincent Croce. No, I don't have any guests lined up right now. Um, you know, I, there, there's a long list of people begging uh, to be on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. So I have to go through a slew of emails and, you know, look at them and just go delete, 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 delete. Or maybe this one, you know. So we'll save that one. Maybe delete, delete, delete. <laughs> oh God! I know we can't get Lonnie this week because he's in Aruba. Oh, on vacay? I presume so. Well, nice. Well, you know, that's good. That's 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 a. Uh, well, they had him running around like crazy after the eclipse last week, so he deserves a break. <laughs> that's right, Vincent Croce. You filled up the car with a. You got a full tank of gas, and sometimes you get a. You get free glasses. Drinking glasses. Those were, those were the good old days, yes. Remember golf used to put two horseshoes, plastic horseshoes, on the back of your car. No knocks, remember? Yes. <clears throat> oh, God. Well, remember, you'll go father with Ethel. Yes. <laughs> oh, speaking of going father, far, farther, um, we better go. And the Joe and Joe, and the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow. 
at the revolutionary Tempest weather system and join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is on the description of this podcast. Use the coupon code WINTER2324. If you do, you will get 10% off. You know what, Joe? Some nights there's just not a whole lot of weather going on. So that we managed just to carry it almost to a quarter after 8 p.m. Eastern time. You know, there's nothing in the long range that really looks like anything threatening. There's just nothing much to talk about. So that's just, just the way it goes. That's the way it goes, folks. All right. And that's the way it is tonight, April the 15th. You have... What, four hours to file your taxes if you haven't filed them already? I'm was sure it, you've, you've filed it, yours, Joe. I know it was Patriots Day in New England, so they get actually a... They got an extra day. So they go to... Extra, from, not in New England, so... Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. If you were in Connecticut, you'd get an extra day. Yes. Well, is it all of New England or just Massachusetts? No, I think... Well, I know it's Massachusetts, and I think... New New uh, Hampshire, Vermont also celebrates Patriots Day. May it may be all in New England. I don't know. Okay, so I never heard that Connecticut was part. You know. Wait until now to start on your taxes. You're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'll just file an extension. All right, um, not Connecticut. I didn't think so, Patrick Darcy. All right, folks. Everybody have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow at seven thirty-five. Night.